Hello? Anyone listening? Peace. The kingdom of God is at hand. Today is the 27th of the first month in the year of our Lord, 2024. The hour is 1946. And the aroma of sweet spaghetti fills these ambitious airs. My stomach is crumbling. But first, I want to feast on Father's words. Breaking bread, which is the body of our Lord, broken for us to nourish our souls as one. Where are you sitting right now? Gosh, I hear those sirens. They're so often now. And soon, the helicopters will fill the skies. Are you sitting on a sofa? Maybe you're in a dilapidated cardboard box. Or on sloping floorboards. Or on a Persian carpet. Or even a gurney trying to distract yourself from the wicked wards waiting to house your flesh in bondage of beguile and deception. Isolation. You could be in a stairwell right now. <sighs> I can hear the cold in my breath. Taking a deep breath in a few solitary moments. I'm sitting beside my Lord, my head on his shoulder, exasperated after dancing and singing praises to him in his courts. Hallelujah. Amen. You can join us. Rise in your spirit. Lift your hands and your voice. Sing praises to him. Sing from your heart all that you long to utter. And if words escape you, sing in the spirit, for he enjoys that. He loves it when we sing to him. The scriptures say to enter into his courts with praise. Bless his holy name and remember to kiss the sun lest he be angry, for it is written, Kiss his son, or he will be angry, and your way will lead to your destruction, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Amen. When I was a child, I would sit and hold on to my dad's motorcycle boots while he sat visiting with friends. A house full of peculiar and familiar faces. That's one of my favorite memories. But none more treasured than my sister and I climbing into a shallow grave that we dug in our backyard where we would lay staring up at the sky, waiting for a true father to take us home. Smiling with our candied lipstick, we'd snivel and cry, watching the clouds traipse over us, hoping that God would see us and send his angels to bring us back where we belong. Often we'd fall asleep, only to awaken in the black nights, having to trudge our way back up those splintery stairs. We lived two stories above that sacred place, marked by one of our dad's motorcycle helmets. 
One day he'll come to take us to heaven, my sister would say, as we'd climb into our beds, waiting, wanting. And that day did arrive, only it was four years later while I lay alone, buried beneath the home, sealed in the pitch blackness of a timeless dread. Forty-one years later, I would share this miraculous experience in my first memoir, after the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me again in 2016, giving me the understanding that He had been with me all of my life. For it is written, The kingdom of God is within you, saith the Lord. Amen. Since he has brought back to my remembrance this astonishing truth, I have dedicated myself to testifying of God's wonderful, loving mercy and glory. Praise Jesus. All glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. You must always remember that he is our first love, and for some, only love. The enemy would have done anything to cause you to forget from whence you have come, but you must be delivered as born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ died for our sins, took our pains, our sicknesses, our punishment, so that we could be forgiven through his blood shed for us in our place. Then God raised him up on the third day to life eternal, having the keys of hell and death and healing those of us who believe in him as Lord and Savior. For by his stripes we are healed, delivered, and have everlasting life. You know, the airways out there, many preachers are teaching. It is all one needs to do is to believe to be saved from the wrath of God in hellfire. The scriptures tell us that we are saved by grace, the grace of my Father through faith in Christ and not by works. This is written. But the scriptures are more than just a sentence, more than scribblings translated by scribes and linguists. Every word is living truth from the mouth of God. It is written, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Jesus Christ is the author of our faith and the finisher. Amen. Many of the pulpits in this darkening world are profane, lewd, and full of dead men's lies. Father's words are being twisted to suit lifestyles that are an abomination, and these brick and mortar buildings will soon be no more. Jesus Christ has come that we should turn away from our sins, repent, receiving forgiveness and praising him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's our Savior, the Messiah. We are to renew our minds with God's laws, love and ways, for all things are passed away and we become new creatures born from the Word of God. The renewing of our mind is utmost. As what we think, we speak, we become. You must understand this. Our Lord says that which a man thinks, so is he. If you should think lusting after a woman, then you have committed the act already. All that we think will eventually pass through the door of our lips. 
And then we either condemn ourselves or we are justified by what we speak. Father says, tell them as surely as he lives that which we speak into his ear, he will do unto us. When my ex-husband died from septus from a dirty needle, I began having awful nightmares wherein he appeared during the random hours of night waking me from my sleep. What are you doing here? I'd ask, and he would nudge my arm. I need water. I would go to the sink, pour a glass of water, but his hand would go through the cup each time he reached for it. He couldn't grab it. He couldn't take a hold of it, and he would become angrier and angrier. Just like he did when he was alive, whenever things didn't go his way. Take it, I'd say, shoving it past him, through him, and then I would awaken. Again, these nightmares haunted me for weeks. And another dream, he was calling to me standing beneath a long spiral staircase. And there was a divider between us. He wanted water, pleading for it. I told you, I can't give you any. I can't come down there where you are. And he would become enraged. Then I'd wake up. Finally, I prayed to ask Father to let me know if my ex-husband went to heaven thinking maybe that knowledge, if he had, I would somehow not have these nightmares anymore. They felt so real, so desperate, I had to know. That night, after I asked my father for this information, I had a dream, and in it, my ex-husband hadn't died. Rather, he was in recovery at our home, where my new husband and I agreed to allow him to stay until he grew stronger. It was just as we had planned. And in this dream, in a random moment, while my husband was out of the house, my ex began stabbing me in the kitchen. I awoke with a shrill understanding that had he lived, this is what he intended to do to me. You see, God knew his heart, his thoughts, and showed me what would have happened if he'd been permitted to live. The next morning, I set to ship off his ashes to his mother, and I dwelled on him no more. This is another reason you need not fear the enemy. Because not only has Jesus given us authority over all the power of the enemy, but he also sets his angels about those who belong to him, commanding the demons not to touch his anointed and doing his prophets no harm. When you're a child of the one and only God, you know he loves you and protects you from dangers. You know nothing of sometimes. I know you heard that bang. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I cast out any demonic evil spirit trying to interfere Father protects you from all evil you have authority over all the power of the enemy when you belong to Jesus Christ he is our Lord our Savior and Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And you can speak with him and realize that he is within you. And he'll never abandon you, ever. However, even the demons believe. 
and we know where they're going to spend eternity. Jesus said to love him is to keep his commandments and to love one another, and the Father will love you, and he will manifest himself to you. Amen. This is what many do not understand, because they have not been taught or simply can't be bothered to read the Holy Scriptures. Our Lord says he will return just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So also, shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, if you have scriptures before you, open it to Genesis 6, 5 through 7. And if not, it is written, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creepy things, and the fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. I want you to realize that God said that man thought every imagination of his thoughts were evil continually. Okay? He decided to destroy the world because men thought evil continually. Only evil, the scriptures say. Okay? And what does Jesus say? That if you think it, you do it, right? I mean, the scriptures didn't say they were doing it. It says, God destroyed the world then but for Noah because man's thoughts were evil continually. So it's so important what we think. It's written in Jeremiah 17.10, I, the Lord, search and examine the mind. I test the heart to give each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. You see, what you think is so important. The Lord examines and he knows your thoughts and he knows your heart. Okay, and if you're having wicked, evil thoughts, then you have done it. And if you speak evil, you have done it. You, do you realize that? It's so important. Very, very important. The times are evil and perilous. Remain vigilant and meditate only on God's words and good things and love one another with all gladness, comforting one another. Remember, be anxious for nothing, okay, but through prayer, special request, and thanksgiving, being thankful, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, amen.
just meditate on the Lord and good things, all good comes to those who love the Lord. And remember, loving the Lord means keeping his commandments in thought and in deed. Hey, I love you. Over. Now.